this painting is something I hear about all the time. Viewers seem equal parts annoyed and disappointed that Parrish didn't look like this when he was fully flamed up and fighting Sebastian. I kind of understood at the time that this is an artist impression of a hellhound painted by someone who had never seen a hellhound. They were like, it's a big human-shaped dog, uh, and it's angry and on fire. And since they didn't have artificial intelligence back then, they had to punch all that information into a regular meat-based intelligence called a painter, and it then came up with this and scribbled it on the wall. Then someone came along later and plastered and piled over it. Maybe because they'd figured out it wasn't at all what a hellhound looked like. And or they decided they didn't want the creepy mural accent wall after all. I kind of understand why people might expect this to be a literal interpretation of a hellhound, because the guy did capture Sebastian's likeness so well. But then again, lots of people saw Sebastian, and there was tons written about him, so there was a lot more information to go on, probably. But hellhounds look different in every culture. Sometimes they have three heads and snake heads. So, if the remit is just draw me a hellhound, you could end up with almost anything. Hey guys, you want to go scaring? <laughs> you want to go scaring? Okay. Besides, paintings don't always have to reflect real life. I mean, that guy Jesus didn't look anything like any of these paintings because none of these artists ever met him, and the Bible just says something along the lines of he was this average looking dude. He probably didn't have a flaming hoop around his head either. The Teen Wolf Hellhound is just a human body possessed by an eternal dog-like spirit that is sometimes on fire. It was never going to look like this. Was Matt turning into a canima? This comes up every now and then after I mention the season two lizard fella in one of my videos. It's actually a good example of something that's said that is believed to be true, but is definitely not canonical. Just because we're in a trailer does not mean we're trailer park trash. Exactly. We're worse. We don't even have enough money to be in a trailer park. In season two, when Matt was in full control of Jackson, he sent him into this lovely trailer home in the woods to kill this couple. <laughs> Apparently the couple had laughed at him when he was saved from drowning at age nine, and then he got yelled at by a really mean man. Anyway. Matt sends Jackson to kill this nice couple who had the audacity to laugh at him. And while Jackson dispatches the guy quickly enough, he notices how fat the woman is and feels sorry for her obesity and therefore does... No, I, I know she's pregnant. I get it. So Jackson refuses to kill her. Lots of people want to go into this huge deep dive into how Jackson's mom died before he was born and how that played into the decision here. But that bit of apocrypha is not why we're here. Jackson refused because the baby wasn't on his target list as provided by Matt's twisted mind. He calls the Kanama a weapon of vengeance. There's a story in there about the South American priest who uses the Kanama to execute murderers in his village. The Kanama kills murderers. While the Laughing Girl apparently fit Matt's unusual definition of murderer, the baby wasn't in the equation at all. So Jackson's lizard brain balked and refused to kill the pregnant woman. This meant that Matt had to sneak into the hospital and do the deed himself. <laughs> Now, 
flash forward to his dummy spit at the sheriff's office. To this. Matt flashes the scales and says he needs the bestiary to figure out what's going on with him. This leads Styles and Derek to posit this hypothetical explanation. You know what's happening to Matt? You can't just break the rules, not like this. What do you mean? The universe balances things out. Is it because he's using Jackson to kill people who don't deserve it? And killing people himself. Matt breaks the rules of the Kinoa. He becomes the Kinoa. Balance. Yes, it's a good theory, but unproven. So while it's said on the show, it's not necessarily canon because we didn't see it actually happen. Matt had canima-like skin, but he did not turn into a canima. That is the official canon. It's called a canima. You knew the whole time. Now Derek has shown some knowledge of canima. he seems less shocked by Matt's condition. But we have to remember that Derek, at this point, has got zero first-hand experience with this specific situation. He is sounding confident, but everything he's saying is new age hippy-dippy about the universe needing balance. It is Styles who actually comes up with the reasoning here. Derek just agrees that Stiles' hypothesis would lead to what he describes as universal balance. At this point in the narrative, neither of these guys is in a position to really know what he's talking about, so we just don't take their guesswork as strictly canonical. There is an argument to be made that the writers included this exchange as an explanation for what we saw and meant this to be the gospel. Again, that is our meta-supposition. So while the Matt turning into a canima for breaking the rules of the canima is certainly widely assumed to actually be true, it is not strictly canon. Here we are, we're, we're like a week away from probably, and I'm going to estimate this because I've known you for a while, this is the biggest day of your career coming up. <laughs> it's two things, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and I, I, I need to know, on a scale of one to Kevin Spacey's pool boy, how nervous are you? <laughs> well, not as nervous. <laughs> I am just off from my latest interview with Jeff Davis about the Teen Wolf movie and his new series, Wolf Pack. I'll have a lot of that new content rolling out for you in the coming days. This is just a really quick news update about some Teen Wolf stuff going on this week. There's a good old-fashioned press junket set for this week. Yeah, it won't look that cool. It'll look more like this, probably. Anyway, cast and producers will do a bunch of interviews, so look for a lot coming from your regular entertainment sites starting next week. Before all that, about 300 invited guests will screen Teen Wolf the movie at a premiere event tomorrow night at a facility in Los Angeles. Jeff's date will be none other than Sarah Michelle Geller. Since she joined Wolfpack as star and executive producer, Geller and Davis have reached the point of siblings from a second sire. They're now friends, and SMG actually found a stylist and helped Jeff pick out what he's wearing to the premiere. That Teen Wolf screening is tomorrow night, so look for lots of social media coverage, and of course, tons should be coming out from the after party. So look for that as well. Coming up on Thursday, they'll do it all over again for Wolfpack. The screening of the pilot episode and select additional footage will be the first time that many in the cast will have seen everything cut together. As of this moment, Jeff tells me they're in the middle of editing episode number six of the new Wolfpack series. 
Both Teen Wolf, the movie, and the first episode of Wolf Pack will debut on January 26th, exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. You can subscribe to Paramount Plus for a free trial to watch the movie, keep it if you like the service, or cancel it before the end of that free trial. Either way, subscribing alerts the network that you are interested in more Teen Wolf, and that is incredibly important. So why does the bike kill some people? This isn't meant to be clickbait, but the answer is a complete mystery. And it's not only a complete so mystery to me. us watching the show, it's a mystery oh. in universe too. Do you want the bite? Do you want the bite? If it doesn't kill you, and it could, you'll become like us. Good old unreliable narrator, Uncle Peter. Well, he left out the option where the bite doesn't kill you, but turns you into a malformed monstrosity. Peter is still the most knowledgeable person we saw speak on the topic during the run of the show. It didn't matter that she was young and strong. Some people just don't believe this. And while he was trying to minimize his role in Paige's death during the episode Visionary... I kept telling him not to do it. Every day, the more he thought about it, the more convinced he became. You know, teenagers, I bet he even blames me. I think he is being honest with his assessment. So that would suggest that nobody actually knows why some people just up and die from a werewolf bite. Or if someone actually knows, they're not telling the werewolves. What if Jackson or Kate became an alpha? Could they make little canima or jaguars with a bite? I'm so tired of answering this question. No. That's it. That's the whole answer. No. Oh, you want to know why? No. Okay. Because alpha werewolf sparks can only make new werewolves. That's what it does. It's pretty much its only unique function. It makes new werewolves. But, my comment section says in unison, an alpha spark made Jackson into a canima and Kate into a cat lady. No, the alpha spark did no such thing. It tried to turn them into werewolves. The Alpha Spark shot out a little werewolf spark through bite and scratch in an attempt to make a new werewolf. But their twisted souls overwhelmed the little spark and made them into those other things. But with a normal soul, the spark always makes a werewolf because that's all it can make. Now we come to what happens if we get an Alpha Jackson or Alpha Kate. I believe we already have an example of what happens when a malform gets hold of an Alpha Spark. Garrett Douglas. So he came out with the power of an Alpha, a low image, and a Ghost Rider. A side effect no one could expect. So Douglas was a Lowenmensch first, but according to myth, Lowenmensch don't actually exist. This suggests to me that Douglas was just another bite gone wrong, malformed werewolf. Whereas that little spark can be overwhelmed and twisted by a human soul, like the one you would find inside a Nazi, this original divine werewolf spark is too pure, too powerful to get twisted. It just makes werewolf. So Douglas went from being a lion man to being an alpha werewolf with some lion features left over. Kind of like Jackson resolved his issues to become a regular werewolf with Canima features. I can't, I can't change completely. I can switch from automatic to manual. 
So if Kate or Jackson were to get an alpha spark, they would be alpha werewolves. Then if they bit someone, that person would turn into a regular old werewolf because that's what the bite of an alpha werewolf always does.